Very pleased to be interviewing John Osborne from TV The Next Generation. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. So tell me about your background. How did you get to where you are today? Well, uh, 23 years at uh, BBDO in the media department, heading up planning and buying for clients like Visa, FedEx, uh, General Electric, DuPont, and uh, and the last uh, the last uh, 10 years I've, I've transitioned into a consulting practice where I focus on the uh, the morphing of the old traditional television business model into the new digital business model driven by things like pro programmatic, driven by things like uh, viewability, driven by things uh, that are measurable and accountable in ways that traditional television never was. How's that going to work? What do you think the deficiencies are in the measurement of television today? Well, the deficiencies are that traditional television has never uh, gotten down to the, uh, the the core business, I think, uh, which would be the interest of advertisers, uh, to measure commercial viewing and commercial ratings. Uh, and it's always been using that surrogate of uh, program ratings uh, to translate down to the, the, the best surrogate we had for many years to uh, estimate commercial ratings. Uh, but now, in the digital world, the measurability is there the uh, the uh, accountability is there, and there's no reason why uh, we uh, an advertiser couldn't know whether a commercial is viewed or not. And of course, with the clutter of television, traditional television, where uh, where the uh, enormous amount of ads that are squeezed into a pod and the amount of pods that really force force viewers to watch 20 minutes of advertising out of every hour of content. Uh, has really trained, I think, the viewer to avoid advertising. And there's so many tools now, the DVR, and, uh, and just, you know, multitasking you now in the, in the modern world has created so many uh, ways for the viewer to avoid advertising that I don't believe television advertisers are really getting what they think they're getting. It's a valuable medium, it will always be a valuable medium, but it's time to move into this next level of measurement. I agree that all of these new technologies like the DVR enable viewers to bypass ads if they want to. Do you think that there's anything that television can do using the new technology to encourage viewership of, of advertising? Well, you know, I always liked the idea of, uh, you know, of uh, a television network and the advertisers that supported uh, sort of getting more on board with what the viewer is there for. The viewer is there for to watch the content and uh, the way that television evolved over the years, uh, you know, when I was growing up there there might be six, eight, maybe ten minutes of commercial, you know, content for every hour of content and that has just exploded and I think that uh, in, in the idea is let's let's trick let's trick the viewer into watching ads by uh, putting them into these pods and then there's a greediness I think that that has evolved over the years well we can make more money if we run more commercials in those pods and the pods have gotten so long that the that the viewer is not watching so I think uh, for me the solution is uh, more of a quid pro quo and in the on-demand world, the quid pro quo, quo would be um, a little bit like the concept of the pre-roll online. Uh, you want to watch some content. Here's a reasonable amount of commercial time, maybe a half minute, maybe a minute, uh, a commercial time in exchange for a half hour of content. Now, that just will totally blows apart the CPM-based kind of ways that we have uh, transacted buying and selling of television. But I think it's time for that because the value of that minute that a, ch that a viewer would choose to exchange for content is much fairer and much more reasonable and I think, I think viewers would be open to something like that. There's a lot of talk in the digital sphere of native advertising. Do you think, and, and you know television started as sort of native advertising with the Texaco Star Theater and all of that. Do you think that there's a place for native on television and that might help? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think, you know, in the digital world, the native advertising um, 
the, uh, the publishers that are out there really using it, like the New York Times, are bending over backwards to let uh, readers know where their editorial content begins and where native advertising begins. And I think, uh, I think if that's clearly done, I, I think uh, infomercials are a form of native advertising on television. You know, as long as the viewer knows and understands that, it's the surreptitious sort of sliding in of, of content and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, and then there's this, uh, you know, this uh, branded advertising too, that's, uh, uh, you know, product placement and things like that. I mean, that, that's a way to get exposure and it's not a hard sell. Uh, the viewer doesn't always know that that's taking place. Uh, but I think, uh, I think there's, a there's a place for it. But again, you've got to engage the viewer and be clear about where what they're there for ends and where the advertising begins. The advertising pays for content, you know, and always has. But I think that social contract has broken down over the years because it's been, uh, media have been ask asking too much of the uh, viewer in terms of uh, paying attention to, to ads.